Augusto, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. It's so nice to to meet you. Thank you so much for taking time this evening to chat with uh, to chat with me. Um, and I'm so excited. I want to see everything that you're able to show us that the light <laughs> will allow. So, yeah. Okay. So, well, thanks for having me. I, I haven't done an Instagram live before, so. I think my kids were making fun of me <laughs> that I was well, going to try it. No, <clears throat> I'm the one that goofed up, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I should probably do anything outside right away because we're losing light. Uh, sure. I don't know if you, it's probably a little dark, but I'm just in front of our bottle shop, which uh, we've been selling through this window here uh, since the pandemic started. So um, am I able to flip I, I can't, the camera? Let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, so now you don't have to see me. So this is our, this is the cidery. I'm just backing up so you can get the whole thing in. I'm so that's doing... kind of this, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> that's I was gonna stretch that's why the teenagers are making fun of me. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the cidery and the storefront. We, we've been selling through that window. Um, well, we opened only February last year. Okay. Um, and then after about six weeks, we were closed <laughs> inside and we haven't opened the indoor part since. Mm -hmm. um, although I'll give you a sneak peek, but it's a bit of a mess because that's like our, you know, kind of the warehouse right now with us not being able to have it open. Oh, we like sneak peeks. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about a mess. We want to see all the stuff <laughs> that we can't. That's the whole point. You can show us everything and we can just keep social distancing. Keep right, it's the insider's look. Exactly. So here's a, the patio. This is, was going to be our parking lot, and then mm -hmm. it wasn't long. We put it in, I think, in May or June last year, and then we realized we need a patio <laughs> sooner than we thought. We weren't even sure if we'd do one. So, but it was, it was a lot of fun. I can't wait till it's open again. It's a, a little, I've been in the process of cleaning it up this week, but that's the patio. There's the side of the cidery so nice so we had um, live music here and we had these old fire pits in the fall oh nice yeah it was a lot of fun and it will be again so that's why the pictures had the plexiglass right for the because i saw them for the musicians that's yes that's, yes that was the requirement yep. yeah oh, so nice. yeah we put that on the plexiglass on the side of a trailer um to make that happen mm -hmm. yeah so it, it worked out well it was it was like I said a lot of fun nice so I don't know we how how's the light I can oh it looks a little more yeah no yeah. yeah yeah let's take advantage of it it looks great okay so there's our old barn um part of it's from the 1850s probably and then the smaller parts from the 1920s so it's a uh, a lot of history on the property and how much, um, how much upkeep do you have to do for that barn? Not so much. Tony, uh, who's my spouse and cider partner, he wants to recite it. I keep putting him off every year because I love the old boards. <laughs> but uh, he loves it to be structurally sound. So <laughs> soon he's going uh, to win. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to give you a little peek of the... Um, the orchard. Oh, nice. We have two. Um, so this one here, can you see? Well, it looks pretty dark on my phone. Um, I can, I, yeah, I'm enjoying it. You can see the sky, but so these we planted um, five acres here on our property. Before they were here, I had 2,000 asparagus plants back here <laughs> that we had to, yeah, we used to, I used to sell it with the kids and, mm -hmm. um, so we had to till that in for these trees. So, so these are the older ones here and they're all, a lot, what we tried to mainly put in is cider varieties of apples. Right. Um, so they have that kind of profile of a high sh sh sugar content and some tannins and, and the tartness and we can't, um, well, you've probably done uh, enough uh, talking in the cider community, but to know, but we can't really get those on the market ourselves. So if you want to make that kind of cider, you got to grow them. <laughs> so that's what these mostly are. And 
So this is about half of what we have here okay. on this property. And then we have another five acres um, at uh, one of our team, another one of our team who works here. He, we have five acres up at his place. So all the apples, do you, do you um, grow all the, apple, all the apples? Do they all come from your orchard? Uh, well, we're hoping to get our first batch of our own apples this summer. Okay. Um, and in the meantime, we either, we, uh, we use organic, certified organic apples, and those come from just a little under an hour away, um, typically. And then we also, although we just ran out, we did our citizen cider project, mm -hmm. where we invited the community to um, pick apples from their backyards or, or roadsides or farm fields or whatever. Ooh, a little wind. Um, and uh, then they brought them here and we bought them. They brought about 6,000 pounds of apples. We made uh, over a thousand liters of what we called citizen cider. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was very, thank God, <laughs> it turned out really nicely and, and now it's sold out. Yeah, I saw that on, so, on your website. So, you, so that was a nice turnaround turnout for that. What a, what a yeah. great use for, for the apples. I mean, for one surplus, it's fabulous. Yeah, I think there ended up, so people brought like, there were, you could tell there were a lot of table apples, but then there were heritage kind of apples in there, um, crab apples, which are really great for cider, um, quince, pears. And so I think just the blend of it all gave it a, a little more character and it had, a, it had a pretty high alcohol content as well. <laughs> um, so here we are almost back at, now I'm coming back towards this cidery. Okay. We're just at the... Barn. Right, I've come around the other way. Okay. What do you use the barn for now? Like what's uh, now? It's mainly uh, storing our stuff. Okay. Um, when the kids were little, uh, I had some cow, a couple cows in there that we raised, and uh, we've had geese and chickens in there. But now it's mostly our stuff in storage um, and hay, and we're we're thinking of. Uh, I can't say much about it, but we're thinking of of maybe doing a little art project or something in there. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. That'll be our next chat, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, I um, you know that. so, so I was going to ask you, how did you come to, to be uh, so involved in the cider community? Were you always a cider leveler or? Um, no. Well, it, for me, it's since uh, 2017. I think it, some people are probably tired of my story now, but um, I actually just uh, went into the LCBO one day, and, um, and, and that was after I was diagnosed with celiac disease. So I was just being a little bit, well, a lot more aware of what I was consuming. Um, and I went in and like, I just saw the cans of cider and it said, you know, vegan and gluten free. And I went, okay, I'm going to try it. Before that, I, I that wasn't sort of, you know, you know, turn 19. And it was like, uh, you know, it was like beers and you're trying a whole bunch of like cooler, like Canada cooler and all of those sort of things right. back in the day. Um, and Mike's lemonade. And, and then um, I tried ciders and, and I just I fell in love with him. And then what sort of happened um, during the pandemic was um, I just connected with some different companies because, you know, we're, we've been in lockdown and so it was it was able to try different ciders different cider companies as ones that I didn't see in the LCBO and that was so much more intriguing and then in the fall I ordered the Ontario Craft Association um, box in October and that was when I kind of went oh my gosh who are the, who are these cideries and where like why have I never seen these before <laughs> and and I just was like I was just all I was just enjoying all these different varieties um that sort of went so far beyond my realm of understanding um and then I said you know I'm enjoying these so much and I just I started an Instagram account in December and then I started connecting with different cideries and we have the cider chat that we do now um in a month like every, the beginning of every month it's just like a zoom chat for like cider, cideries come, um, cider influencers, cider reviewers. And I just, I really, I really enjoy them. I, and I love and respect the integrity for what you cider makers do um, for your craft, because um, you can taste that. You, you can taste the, the purity and the integrity, especially when it's a, when it's a local craft 
um, uh, salary when you can taste that sort of craftsmanship and I appreciate that. And, and so now I'm just enjoying uh, reaching out and trying to uh, really expose other people to different um, cideries, wineries, other local companies that, you know, we may not have otherwise known about. And then even now with the pandemic, what it has done is, is forced, I know for me to look at, look beyond like my local shops for everything. I mean, I live in Mississauga, so I have access to many different things, but I don't have access to you because you don't ship or deliver to Mississauga. And I, you know, right. And so it's, so there's different things that, that have come about. So that's sort of my, my um, story in a nutshell. And then now, uh, now it's kind of interesting because my, my eldest daughter, she's legal. She's, you know, she'll be 21 in, in July, but I've gotten her kind of sort of interested in ciders as well. So that's sort of uh, a nice, a nice thing also. And so she's looking at, you know, people like Taz with Girl with a Cider Review and her No Apologies um, initiative. And that's been something too, that I, I'd like to, to help support and foster with, you know, with my girls um, being, you know, 20 and 16 as well, just sort of uh, to show initiative. So that's, that's, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just someone who enjoys it. And I, and I like talking to people and hearing your stories and, and letting other people know about them. Right. Yeah. So, so interesting and, and interesting that you could tell, or that the craft ciders were kind of eye-opening compared to like I, when I was um, well in the 90s I, I did drink cider it wasn't really a thing back then but I loved it but it was always Strongbow that's really and I lived in both Canada and the States and that's really all I ever had until things started taking off a little bit here and then <laughs> the real craftiest cider I ever had really was the first cider that uh, my partner Tony made uh, the first time he made it, he just, he does everything pretty big right away. So he made like, I don't know, so he, we have these old apple trees. So we just thought, oh, let's make use of them. And he just pressed 300 liters and, and, and it was so good. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> and so craft and, and then, and he's really learned the ropes of, of, of how to make cider, you know, more and more every year. And he's kind of a perfectionist and, a guy who can make anything happen so <laughs> so it's it's been my own similar journey with with craft stuff too and so lucky that Ontario um, ha has this growing industry here oh it's fabulous I, and great to, that that there's such a tight community too that you're a part of it seems like a pretty tight inclusive kind of bunch of people um, there's no pretenses it's just a bunch of people that like I, I don't know everyone who I've met along this journey and that you know just um, it goes beyond like the realm of the, what I, I ever thought was possible. Like I do tastings with this lovely lady from New Zealand and, you know, and um, interacted with people from Japan and England and of course the States as well. And then that's uh, in Ontario. Um, also, there's so many wonderful people around here and everyone's just so open and honest and willing to, to lend you an ear and, and, talk about anything and I mean I put reviews out where things are you know they're not my style I don't like them and I've had lots of comments from companies saying well thank you for your honesty but you know my other thing too is I, I don't put anything to waste so if I don't like it I repurpose it I usually bake or cook like savory food with it so right but what what started like what made Tony go I'm gonna make cider like is it just <laughs> um uh, well as you uh, like Farming is kind of at the heart of it in mm -hmm. a way for us. And also just liking to have something, a meaty kind of project. Okay. So like I was saying, we've always been doing these little hobby farm things here. And then we have three kids. So as they were getting older, it's like, okay, we can, we should maybe squeeze something in here. And we had those old apple trees behind the house and, um, just, you know, we're struggling always to grow food here. And, and here's all these hundreds of pounds of apples just sitting there. So, so yeah, Tony made that first kind of hobby batch. And I think I drank most of it. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and then it just went from there. And, and we just partnered up and, and we worked well, to, we work well together. And it's just, it's a fun, we both have other jobs. Um, so, but it's a really fun um this is definitely the more fun of our jobs. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. 
Well, it must have tasted really good for you to go from from that to uh, from his tasting to uh, you know your full blown cidery. That's yeah, cute. every year we we get a little bigger. Um, yeah, it's a we got to each year you kind of assess like how how big do you want to be and you know I think we both want it to stay always at a size that we enjoy doing it. Nice. So people ask us, you know, if we're in the LCDO or if we're going to be, but for now, anyway, we don't, we don't have any aspirations to mainly because, well, mainly because you got to have quite a volume to go in there. Right. Um, and we just don't operate at that volume. And also our ciders are on the drier side. Like it is a range, but some of the ones in the bottom range, they, at least that are, LCBOs around here, they're just not that into the drier ciders yet. So maybe one day we'll do it, but it's not in our not in our plans right now. Yeah, I am I am a dry cider fan. I like the the drier, the sour, the tart. I like uh, that's that's right. totally, that that's my palate 100. percent So uh, absolutely, when I go into the LCBO now, it's usually because I have a tasting with somebody that as has asked me to try something that's too that's sweet just to you know have a different um taste on my palate or to match something with them but um um i love dry ciders so now you go to you sell them at the farmer's market right in uxbridge or was there yeah we sell them at the uxbridge farmer's market and we'll be at the new market farmer's market this year which is a really lovely little farmer's market on their river commons it's a beautiful space so we'll be at there at least for june and july um maybe beyond that and then uh we may be at other um markets too which we'll just announce on our social media or website sure now how was the uh, the restrictions that, i mean the the new the newest i guess the lockdown how has that impacted um you I, I guess with the bottle shop like do they do people have to make an appointment to come or what's, what's the preferred way for you? We're kind of like right now, it's you, you, you come up to this uh, window here and so you're outside the whole time and we're inside and there's, uh, you know, we've got these tables here to make sure we keep our distance. Okay. Uh, but we do have online purchases that we set up at the beginning of the pandemics and then we set up a table. So if people just want to order online and then do curbside, um, so we just started right now kind of monitoring it. We may go back to curbside only. Um, just like everything else this year, you kind of make it up as you go. But right now we have the bottle shop window, um, Friday, Saturdays and Sundays, as well as the curbside pickup. So you just need to order online at least an hour ahead okay. and then it'll be outside for you. Okay. And uh, can I ask you, everything is in 750 mils, right? Yes. Yeah. Everything is a 750 mils. Okay. Is there, is there something that's, um, um, cause I know there's a lot of cideries that, that choose that way, or I mean, canning process I know is, uh, or I can understand it can be incredibly, uh, ordeal and expensive, but is there something about the integrity of the cider that changes from, or that appeals, I guess, to you more when it's in the bottle or, or how it can, how it can, um, um, like how it tastes. Is there anything? Um, that's a good question. I mean, at our scale, so we have a bottler, uh, which I could show you. Yeah. Um, and that's an, that's equipment we invested at, at our, you know, a small scale. That's what makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. You know, I see that cideries that are, you know, getting bigger eventually go canning. So I don't know, maybe we would go that way right now. I think, um, it is a funny thing in a way, the 750 mil bottle, cause you have the carbonation right and then you're losing the carbonation but i'll show you we have these flip top lids so this is the, this is the inside of the store um i'm gonna try to avoid all the uh boxes <laughs> and stuff everywhere oops oh, i might have just given you a happy face i don't know so this is the store let me turn the light on here oops sorry <laughs> oh, that's, oh nice so that's the inside of the store the bar over there nice. and those are the windows that go onto the patio oh that's beautiful and then this is the uh inside of the bottle shop window where we oh. sell from this little spot here okay so when people are outside that's what the table is in front of is that right yeah yeah, yeah okay. that's what we see and then so and then these are our ciders so yeah they have this flip top lid um 
So after you open it, you can close it right away. Yeah. And then unless it's really empty, it lasts for several days like that, the carbonation. Um, and I drink them flat. I don't mind them flat at all. I think they're still quite good. Um, but, but so yeah, we, we maybe someday would go towards canning, but for now we're in these, we're in these bottles. Can I ask how that, the, how the, the flip top, like the one that you put in, I forget what it's called, um, how that would compare it, it versus like a, a wine pump? Um, well, I guess with a wine pump, you're removing the headspace above. So mm -hmm. with a wine pump, if you had um, just like a small amount of cider left, you okay. could probably still keep it carbonated for a few days. But with this, once it gets low, then even with the flip top, the carbon, because there's so much headspace above that, mm -hmm. it's just the physics of the gas, it will get flat. If your bottle's like fairly you know, you've only had half of the bottle or something and you put the cap on, it keeps, it keeps quite well. Okay. Oh, nice. Um, and this is, so these are uh, non-alcoholic ciders that we have. And um, our daughter, our middle child, she's 15. She's um, also making her own with a friend. She's starting a little business. Um, and so she's starting to make some non-alcoholic other non-alcoholic options as well. So that's pretty exciting for us to have them involved and, and uh, you know, she's a very, uh, she, she has a lot of initiative and she's willing to do the work. So it's, it's pretty exciting. That's great. Now, um, but those are our, so, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, is she gonna do it for you or is she gonna do it in, under her own label and, uh, and, and compete against you? She's going to make, <laughs> she's <laughs> going to make her own with her own label. She's also a great artist and she's doing it with a friend. So they will make their own and they'll probably help us with these two or we'll join forces. These, cause these ones are, are apple cider. So they're sparkling, non-alcoholic, like um, the cider you get in the fall that's unfiltered, kind of dark. Mm -hmm. It's like that, but sparkling. And then one of them is plain apple and then the other one um, is apple and cherry. Oh, nice. So she'll probably, ha she had, she, um, has been very involved in those. She, in fact, she probably bottled these ones here. Um, <laughs> uh, and then she'll have her own label as well. Great. Anything, do you, would you want to give her a little plug? Does she have a, do they have a little name yet? Or she doesn't it... have a, no, they don't yet. yet. Okay. They're working well, we'll, on it. We'll it's in the inf it. infant stage. Okay. We'll look out for it though. That's so exciting. Um, I can show you quickly our bottler, or a bit of our production area if you oh, want. I would there's, love to see that. There's not a ton to see because um, it's just juice fermenting, right? <laughs> it's boring. It's just sitting there. But um, let's see here. So this is the production space. So that's our shiny bottler and the tanks and the bright tank. And it's uh, kind of connected to the outdoors there. So yeah, that's our production space. Oh, I think that's great. I love I love the behind the scenes. <laughs> I love that. That's so great. Now, will there ever be I'm, any um, plans for shipping or delivery? If, if this lockdown I, continues, if the lockdown continues or the measures, you know, continue, at some point we would. Yeah, but right now, like if. Let's say at the end of this, we get into the red zone here in Durham region, and then maybe we moved into the orange, even mm -hmm. in there somewhere, we would open our patio. And oh. as long as we can get a decent patio service uh, season in this year, um, I don't think we'll do shipping yet. I keep getting tempted, but I know, if, you know, if, I don't want to bite off more than we can chew. Um, but if this drags on, then yeah, I think we will ship. Okay. I'll, I'll remember, I'll remember you said that, but you're at the farm, <laughs> <I know. laughs> but you're at the farmers, you're at the, uh, the Uxbridge and then the new market one you said for June and July. The new market one, June yeah. and July, the Uxbridge one, which is an award-winning market. Um, it, wore, it won best farmer's market of Ontario in 2019, I think. And then last year, best of Durham. I hope I'm getting that right, but it's a great little market and it opens early May and runs till October. And then um, 
We are also available just in the local uh, restaurants here, the Urban Pantry is a fantastic okay. place. So it really supports all kinds of local growers around here. Um, Navarra's Eatery and Tin, we're often in those restaurants as well. Oh, nice. Um, mm -hmm. I have a couple questions about things that I saw on your website that I just wanted to know if you could explain to me. Um, the, the you, you talked on the website about um, having true cider apple trees. And is that, um, is that reflective of the, the varieties that you mentioned? Um, on, well, you, on the website, it was a, I wrote down so I wouldn't forget because I hadn't heard of these types before. But the Kingston Black, uh, Garlington Mill, and the Debonet. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Right? So what, what, so can you, can you give me like a little bit of a backstory about that, about those apples? Right. Look at that love for urban pantry there. <laughs> um, everybody loves urban pantry. So um, yeah, those are what I was uh, mentioning have the profile of uh, the tannins, the, the, sh the right sugar content and enough tartness. So in North America, these apples would have been cut down that kind of apple, it would have been cut down um, during prohibition mm -hmm. because they're only good for cider. You bite it and it tastes like crap. You can't eat it as a table apple. And so um, I guess a lot of that was cut down in prohibition. So only now with this craft cider movement are people that want to make more traditional cider planting their own uh, varieties. The Kingston Black that you mentioned is a, a special one that it's, um, you can do a single varietal. It's one of the few uh, varieties, even of cider apples, that you don't have to blend. A lot of cider making is about blending mm -hmm. to get that great profile, but a Kingston Black can stand on its own. Um, we did a single varietal uh, golden russet that turned out really nicely. It's gone now. And we have another one coming up, uh, a new single varietal we haven't released yet. Um, so that is also more of an, a, a heritage apple. So if, if we can get our hands on heritage apples, we do. Otherwise, we're just waiting for ours to, to mature. Nice. Oh, that's good. That's uh, so informative because I didn't know about those um, kinds of apples. So that's why when I, I, th I I'd never seen those names. So I'm glad. So thank you for sharing that with me. And the other thing was, is that I know the traditional cider making process was very, is very integral, very important. Um, can you explain a little bit about what what the traditional um, cider making process is versus maybe something that's um, present day, like mass produced larger companies maybe? Yeah, mainly it's patience. So we let it um, go. So after it goes through its initial primary fermentation, which is what juice wants to do. It just wants to the, you know, turn itself into alcohol. And then eventually, if you let that go in the presence of oxygen, it wants to turn into vinegar. So cider makers stop it before that happens. But if you keep letting it after the primary um, fermentation and you keep the oxygen out, it will go through these other natural fermentation um, phases. It just all of a sudden it starts bubbling again Okay. And, um, but you got to let it go for a lot more months. And so and a lot, you know, like a strong bow or something like that, they're cranking it out, you know, they're just doing it a month, maybe, or I'm not sure something four to six weeks. I don't know. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's quick. So we we've let ours go as long as even a year and a half, even after all those stages, those fermentation bubblings <laughs> um, have stopped and kind of petered out after many months. We still let it age some more just to smooth it out and make sure it has that kind of traditional character to it. Nice. Wow. That's great. I'm so looking forward to coming, um, you know, yeah. either, either when your patio is open or um, uh, just do you at the farmer's market. Now, is it you and Tony at the farmer's market? Like, do you, or is there one that you go to and one that he goes to just in case I stop by one? He, he's often in the back and he's a bit of a snuffleupagus uh, <laughs> and he's, he's not even on social media at all. He'll probably never see this video. <laughs> um, but so I go to some, he might go to one uh, this year and then we have really great staff. I mean, m most of them are, are people and friends that I had before we had the cidery and uh, they they do the markets and they they enjoy doing the market so it's kind of a mix depending on the market and the day who would be there so you should come up here I and let me know you before you come so we can meet face to face perfect that's that, that sounds great 
And then in the summer, once we you're, you know, well, or let's just say summer, or when the patio is allowed to be open, do you think you'll go back to the, um, to the music? I hope so. Um, I'm a musician myself and I, okay. you know, when Tony started this project, I was, he really hit the ground running and I was kind of reluctant at first because I was, had the kids and my job and music and I was organizing with friends. We were organizing an annual music festival here and other projects. And so I was kind of like, I had too much, but I quickly <laughs> decided it was too fun to not um, partner up. But, but anyway, so yes, we have strong ties to the music community here. And I think that we'll, we'll be doing it again in some form or another here on the patio. So is, 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 you talked about um, the trees being cut down during the prohibition and that it was the banjo era. So is that where the name came from? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is okay. where it came from. And I, when Tony was doing that first hobby run of cider, I was learning the banjo. And so we were kind of marrying our, our two hobbies. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's perfect. The perfect name. <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you so much for all of the um, behind the scenes to uh, behind the scenes tours and, and taking the time and with you know with your evening with your family to show us all of the grounds. And I think um, um, it's going to be so exciting to come and to meet you. And you know, I, I will definitely let you know before I come. So to make sure that you're there. And um, it's just you know what you're doing and what you're trying to uh, provide for all of us. Uh, you know, especially me, I'm a dry cider lover. So of course, I'm so excited to come and I think Revival has my name <laughs> written on it. Um, but, uh, and, and to show us and to teach us about the cider making process and what we, we can be looking for. I, it's been, it's been great meeting you. This is really enjoyed chatting with you. Yeah, you too. Thanks very much for reaching out and oh. for all the supporting work you've been doing in the industry and, and, the whole the, the whole cider community has been really great so thank you so much oh my pleasure it's just been so fun so um yeah it's been great and uh and have a wonderful evening again thank you so much and everyone who is um making plans for the summer include a trip to uxbridge um call ahead first or order online uh go to the farmer's market go see them at new the new market farmer's market the uxbridge farmer's market and uh Anything we can all do to help support um, Ontario Saturdays, you know, let's all chip in and help each other out. So, yeah. Thank great. you so much. Thanks so much. Great. Have a great Have a good night. night. Thank you. Bye. We'll see you in the summer. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>